Hey, welcome to part three of my message for this week, Destiny Over Destination. This is something that is powerful. This is something that I feel will really help you move to the next level in God's destiny in your life. So in part one, we looked at some of the context behind the main uh, scripture reading for today, and that is Genesis 21, verses 14 through 20. I encourage you to go there if you haven't watched it already, because that will set up a lot of what I'm going to be talking about now. So last, uh, during part two, during the last part, I looked at some of the people because there are two people that are involved in this story. There's the mother and then the son. So I discussed the people and the roles that the people play, but I mainly discussed the mother's role and what was happening. I discussed Hagar's role and what's happening. But now, during this part, we're going to focus on Ishmael. We're going to focus on the son. So if you guys can remember back to part two, when I was talking, sometimes God calls us to be provided by other people. There are things that God is trying to put in your life where God has already destined you, but God is saying, wait, you first have to be provided by other people before you can step into your destiny. So, there are things in my life where I feel like I've been provided by other people. And I'm sure that you feel this way too. If we can think back, for some of us, we still may be living with our parents, but for those of us who do not directly live with them now, we can think back to when we were directly provided by our parents. And God sometimes calls us into the role of the mother to provide for people, even when we feel like we can't do it at the level that we want to. But also, God calls us to the position of the son. So let's think about Ishmael here. So Ishmael is in a position, he's a baby, he still has to be carried by his mother, he cannot hunt, he cannot find food, he cannot do anything by himself So he can't survive without being provided by other people. But he is destined by God. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about his destiny. It's just he's not in a position where he can receive it yet. Because sometimes God calls a maturing stage into our lives before we can step into God's call. So let's look back to Genesis 16, verses 11 and 12. This is talking about Ishmael. This is God. This is when God talks to Hagar, talking about Ishmael. So let's look at what God is saying here about Ishmael, about the son. Genesis 16, verses 11 and 12 say, The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now with child, and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. So Ishmael means God listens. Now this will come into play a little bit later in this part, but God listened to Hagar's uh, mistreating. God listened to Hagar's situation and provided for it. And this this providing by God then turned into a, excuse me, turned into a destiny for her son. Verse 12 says, He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everybody and everybody's hand against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. So, what does this mean? This means that even though and I'm about, to, I'm about to spit some alliteration on you. You ready? Even though God has destined you, destiny doesn't defer difficulty or danger. In fact, 
difficulty and danger and discomfort, honestly, difficulty, danger, and discomfort derive from destiny. It's not that once you've been destined by God that you won't have difficulty, that you won't be in danger, that you won't feel discomfort, but rather because you've been called by God, because you receive destiny into your life. Now, Ishmael, this is important. It's important that he goes through some hard times because in order for him, because he's going to be the leader of a great nation. Remember, once Hagar lifted Ishmael up, God said, I will make him into a great nation. In order for him to be a leader of a great nation, he's got to go through some hard times. Because if he goes through a perfect and easy life, then once he gets into the position where he now has to lead other people, where he doesn't know difficulty, where he doesn't know danger, where he doesn't know discomfort, then he won't be able to live out God's destiny. So sometimes the things in your life that you feel that are, that are unfair to you, that are uh, meaningless, the things that God, that you feel God shouldn't allow, Sometimes those are the things that God is saying, if you turn to me, then I will provide what's necessary. So, so this baby, right, was left underneath in the bushes. He was at death. This baby was about to die. The son was about to die. The provider could not provide for him anymore. So he was left to die. But do not let destiny die. You're not going to let destiny die. But if you're the person who you feel has been abandoned in your destiny, just wait. Because God's working on the other people. But there's one thing that you need to do in order to get into a situation where God can work. You ready for this? It says in, in uh, verse 21, when God is talking to Hagar, it says, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying. So by this boy crying, we can assume that he's doing the only thing that he can do, which is pray to God. Because God has heard this baby's crying, and God hears our prayers. So by crying out to God, this baby might not be able to provide for himself. This baby might not be able to handle life as it is. God might not have them in the place or the uh, maturity of their destiny yet. But one thing is for sure, you can still turn to God. You can still call out to God. You can still cry out to God. And that's what you need to do. When you feel... Like you've been abandoned by the people who are supposed to be providing, providing you. All you need to do is cry out to God because look at what happens when the baby cries out. When the baby cries out, God hears. But if God never heard the baby, then God wouldn't have talked to Hagar. And if God hadn't have talked to Hagar, then Hagar wouldn't have come and lifted you up. Sometimes it takes you crying out to God in the place where you feel like the person who's supposed to be providing for you isn't providing for you. They're sitting far enough away where they can't hear your cry because they don't want to accept that they aren't in a position where they can provide for you anymore. So they just leave you by yourself. But if you cry out to God, once you cry out to God, then God can hear your crying. God can go and talk to Hagar and say, I've heard this baby crying. Do not be afraid, for he will become a great nation as long as you lift him up. Sometimes it takes you being down in order to be lifted up. Sometimes it takes you having to cry out in order for you to live your calling. Sometimes you're the son. Sometimes you're in the place where you're provided by people. But let me tell you, if you feel like those people aren't doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, keep crying out to God. Because God will send the right person back to lift you up. But if you never cried out to God in the first place, then they won't 
be able to lift you up and make you into a great nation. So I hope you come back for part four. We're going to be looking at the location. We're going to be looking at the place that this is taking or that this is happening in. I hope to see you back for part four.